Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sofia Palace yesterday the Minister of State for Europe and the Americas, Sir Alan Duncan and Sir Geoffrey Tantum, currently visiting the Kingdom. His Majesty the King welcomed the guests, hailing the Bahraini British relations that have extended to over 200 years of coordination and cooperation in various fields. His Majesty the King reiterated Bahrain's keenness to consolidate its long standing relations with the United Kingdom to serve the common interests and aspirations of the two countries. His Majesty also praised the important role played by the friendly United Kingdom in establishing security and stability in the region and promoting peace at the international level. In appreciation for his efforts to promote the historical relations between the two families and his great contributions to the promotion of friendly and cooperative ties between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom, His Majesty the King bestowed upon him the Bahrain First Class Medal. His Majesty hosted a dinner in honour of Sir Alan Duncan and Sir Geoffrey Tantum. In recognition of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the outstanding efforts of Sir Geoffrey Tantum to promote the historic relations between the two royal families and the two friendly countries and his great contribution to strengthening relations of friendship and cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom, His Majesty the King will bestow upon him the Order of Bahrain of the First Class. As I just said, I mean, I'm very privileged indeed and most grateful to you to receive this magnificent honour. Perhaps the feature that stands out is the relationship that you, sir, have with Her Majesty the Queen between the two heads of state. It's clear to any observer that that is a relationship quite different from others, and there is to it a warmth and genuine affection, which I don't think applies to many of her international relationships. For my part, CD, the last 23 years have brought countless wonderful experiences, a deep love of Bahrain and the Bahrainis, and underpinning all those, a friendship with you, sir, that I will always cherish, just as I will cherish this marvellous symbol that you have given me of that friendship. Thank you very much. Thank you. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, today received at Qadabia Palace a number of Royal Family members and officials, with whom His Royal Highness reviewed a number of local affair topics. His Royal Highness affirmed the government's keenness on encouraging openness, especially in the economic field, which contributes to attracting more investments, tourists and visitors. His Royal Highness expressed pride in the national competencies and their effective role in the national march, affirming that Bahraini citizens have always been a source of pride for the keenness on protecting and establishing national unity. His Royal Highness affirmed that the urban growth and investment activity progress in the Kingdom require current and future projects that ensure the accommodation of increased traffic on roads. He noted that concerned authorities have been directed to solve the problem of traffic congestion, especially in the main and active roads, by developing a main road network and constructing more flyovers and tunnels. His Royal Highness reviewed with the guests a number of international affair topics, stressing that regional developments require citizens to be cautious and vigilant to ensure the protection of national security and stability and the continuation of the economic growth march.
The Maharak Model Youth Centre opened doors for the fourth edition of the Khalid bin Hamad Theatres Festival for national clubs, youth centres and people with disability. More in this report with Yasmina Ibrahim. We're raised on the fourth edition of the Khalid bin Hamad Theatres Festival for national clubs, youth centres and people with disability, aimed at empowering and supporting the kingdom's youth in the cultural and artistic fields. The fourth edition continues its legacy of hosting exceptional artistic performances and providing a space where talent meets ambition. There are so many different uh, means for the youth to express uh, themselves. Uh, they have a lot of good messages they want to send uh, to the community, to the society, to, uh, to the world as well. Um, having such a thing here in Bahrain for the youth, this is one of the many ways, the many artistic ways that they can send their messages, they can share their emotions, we can see their live performances. Um, watching it on TV is one thing, but live performances uh, really requires a lot of skills. And I think this, these type of skills can be carried on uh, to different sectors or to, 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 to their future as well. Uh, they can learn from it, they can practice it, they can uh, choose it as a career or they can even um, learn from it so that they can carry on the success to, uh, to their future. The festival in its fourth year continues to contribute into creating a generation of artists who would represent the Bahraini arts and cultural movement regionally and internationally. A total of 12 plays are scheduled to be performed by local youth centers and clubs during the 14-day long festival, which is annually held as part of Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa's initiatives to support and empower the youth of the kingdom. The ultimate objective um, is to uh, utilize the talent, the Bahrainis, uh, uh, to make them actually the, the employees of choice. Uh, it's a sector, it's not just a competition, it's a platform uh, where we, we're actually uh, trying to utilize all the uh, uh, talented uh, 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 media professionals uh, being on the stage, being behind the stage, uh, and we, we look forward, to be honest, to see more. Such festivals are important for the theatrical move here in Bahrain and uh, for uh, His Highness Sheikh Khaled to support uh, youth theatres. It's really important because uh, we would really like them uh, to develop their skills and not just become famous in Bahrain but hopefully internationally and take these shows to an international level. Uh, we're so proud of uh, this festival and we wish them all the best in this year and in the coming years inshallah. Several re-owned theatre actors and actresses headlined the launch of the festival and were honoured as well as the teams that organised preparations for the festival which will go on until the 15th of October and aims to bring the talented youth of the kingdom closer to achieving their dreams. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Reconstruction and Infrastructure, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, held a meeting today at Gadebia Palace with the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Minister Dr. Abdul Hussein bin Ali Mirza, the Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, Engineer Isam bin Abdullah Khalaf, the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, and a number of officials from concerned ministries and government authorities to discuss the latest developments and determine the technical requirements related to the King Hamad Causeway project and the railway network connecting GCC countries. The Deputy Premier said that Bahrain considers the King Hamad Causeway as one of its important strategic projects that boosts the historic brotherly ties with Saudi Arabia and supports the Gulf infrastructure development and logistic services, especially passengers and cargo transportation. He said that the Ministerial Committee spared no efforts in following up with the progress of the preparatory and technical work for this project. Sheikh Khalid directed the ministries and governmental service providing departments to streamline the procedures and approvals regarding retention of the anticipated internal route of the King Hamad Causeway, determine the lands and public and private properties likely to be affected by the project for the purpose of estimating the financial cost. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications affirmed that the project, which is expected to be launched in two years' time at an estimated cost of about four billion US dollars in funding and partnership with the private sector, will consist of four lanes for vehicles and two railway tracks. Under the patronage of the Shura Council Speaker Ali bin Saleh Asale, 
the regional parliamentary forum was held titled Investment in Youth Towards Regional Development to Achieve the Goals of Sustainable Development in cooperation and coordination between the Shura Council and the Asian Forum of Parliamentarians on Population and Development, the AFPPD. The forum recommended the parliamentarians in Arab and Asian countries to exchange information and assess progress on population and development issues, calling on governments to prioritise sustainable development goals. The parliamentarians stressed that young people constitute a large proportion of the population in the Arab and Asian regions, and through appropriate investment, they promote community development and achieve sustainable development goals. They stressed the need to prioritise to invest in youth education noting that the provision of decent employment opportunities for young people made them a driving force for sustainable development, contributing to social stability and building a foundation for development. The importance of, of this um, meeting is to basically give emphasis that we, it's high time for us to invest in our youth because eventually they'll be the one that the leaders of our, of our countries and um, to look into achieving the sustainable development goals. Uh, like in our country, the Philippines, we really have to look into the poverty incidents, especially at the rural side or the countryside. So um, this meeting will provide for a venue. It, it is a platform for us parliamentarians to sit down, talk, and possibly listen to each other's stories listen to each other's narratives, the best practices of each country that we could possibly apply in our own country as well. As parliamentarians, we have a great role to portray in achieving the SDGs and in ensuring a better future for our youth and in preparing our youth for the future. We have to change this world to the, uh, the right way that is uh, for the actually about the healthy and uh, the, like uh, you know the, the like, like uh, sporty and uh, sometimes like uh, you know the educated and sometimes uh, the, the like uh, uh, you know that uh, some people have some things it's about thinking about the world about the nature and everything we have to care